as I said in the open, this is the best thing we, that we do. It really is. So uh, we're glad that you're here and get to uh, witness this. So what we're doing this morning is we're, we're doing a couple of baptisms. Now, just real quickly, baptism is a practice of the church that goes back 2,000 years. It goes back to Jesus himself. Jesus had grown up in obscurity and had just really, he, believe it or not, had lived a perfect, sinless life at home, taking care of his widowed mom and <clears throat> dealing with his siblings, helping provide. But God had a plan for his final three years of his life, and that was to enter into the public ministry that we read about in the New Testament, everything that led up to his uh, sacrifice for us. But before he did that, he kind of had this party, this declaration of, okay, this is, this is what's going to be, this is what's going to happen. And he went down to the Jordan River where John the Baptist, who you may have heard of, was actually baptizing people who just felt God saying, I need to repent. I need to repent of my sins. And people would go down. Jesus wasn't anywhere on the scene. No one knew about Jesus at this moment. They just went to John the Baptist because they felt God saying, you're a sinner and you must repent. And they would repent and they'd be baptized for the repentance of their sins. Jesus goes down. John knows he obviously doesn't need to be baptized, and John goes, he says, I need John, I need you to baptize me. And John goes, no, 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 I need you to baptize me. And Jesus says, John, for the sake and the will of the Father and the purpose I'm here for, you must baptize me. And Jesus was baptized. And then he went on to live three years and, and proclaim the ministry he did, and then he was killed. He was crucified three years after that to make a way for you and I to be forgiven of our sins. But he didn't stay dead. He rose again. And as he rose again and was on the earth for about 40 more days after that, before he left, he gave a command. He said, go out now, make believers, make disciples, and baptize them. And what he had gone through, he now told us. And so today we celebrate baptism as a symbol of uh, God, by his grace, has come into my life and allowed me to have faith in him and trust in him. And through Jesus' death, I can be forgiven like Jesus went into the tomb and died, he also rose from the dead. And so when we go into the water, we don't stay in the water, we come out of the water, and it symbolizes the new life that we have in Christ. And so that's what's going to happen today as these two folks come up here to be baptized. The second person uh, who will be baptizing is, also has a connection. Uh, their family lives about two blocks over from ours, and so we've met their family and got to meet her just kind of in the neighborhood. She has a little bit more of that story to tell, so if you can welcome Hannah Bodian. Oh, look at that. Hello, everyone. I am 22 years old, and about a year ago, I happened to meet Julie, Jeremy's wife, while she was out walking the, in the neighborhood. During our brief conversation, she told me about Rooftop and invited me to come out sometime. Not really interested, I said, yeah, maybe. You see, I thought God and I were good. Growing up Catholic, I believed in him and would talk to him, and as far as I knew, that was enough. At the same time, I was 20 years old, going through a divorce, making the best of, the best of a bad situation, thinking I was happy, but I wasn't. A couple days later, on October 28th of last year, it hit me. Sheer panic fell over me, and I literally could not breathe. My spiritual eyes were opened, and I suddenly realized that I was not living my life for God. I was doing my own thing, and I was in trouble. I came to Rooftop, I met and talked with Jeremy that week, and hearing my story, he said, and I quote, this might sound weird to you, but this is the best news I have heard all day. It was weird. <laughs> it turns out the Zilke family, kids included, and some people in the neighborhood had been getting together to pray for our neighborhood. They had specifically been praying that we, the neighbors, would feel a deep conviction of our sin, and through that, cry out for Jesus for salvation. Well, that is exactly what happened to me. Hearing the gospel, I repented of my sins, asked Jesus into my life, and wow, what a year it has been. The Lord gave me a loving small group, and I continue to grow with the help of some amazing people here at Rooftop. Also, I can finally read my Bible without condemnation. <laughs> and God is still able to convict me of sin that is still in my heart. I'm not a perfect Christian, but through Jesus, I've made, been made new, and I press on. In fact, these are the verses God has given me to share with you. Philippians 3, 12 through 14. Not that I have already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus told me, to, took hold of me. 
Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Jesus Christ. Thank you. She is a testimony that prayer does work. So for those of you who are praying, keep praying. Let me pray for these two. Father God, we are so grateful and thankful for this morning and for this opportunity. Thank you for these great stories. Thank you for a young man who just had a mark in his heart from you. And when given the opportunity here a short while ago, realized what that was supposed to look like and, and how to pursue and go after that. And Caleb's been persistent. We've asked him to wait and to just share and to kind of rest in it to make sure it's not an impulse thing, and he has been persevering, and we admire him for that, and we're grateful to celebrate with him today through baptism. And for Hannah, thank you, God, for doing what you do. It's not about us. It's not about what we do. It's about your faithfulness, your love for her, your wanting to call her as your daughter under yourself, and for us just to be able to witness and, uh, by your grace, be, have a little small part in that. I pray, I pray that we'd be a church that has their ears open, that we'd be listening and looking for these opportunities of men and women who are destined to come to know you, and we might have a, a small role uh, in, in seeing that come about and then being able to give you great praise and glory for it. We thank you for Hannah, for her story, for her perseverance to follow after you um, as Philippians 3 shares. And we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Anybody, and do you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and your Lord and Savior? Yes. Because of your profession of faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You too can be baptized by the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we would love to baptize you. In fact, that's what we do here at Rooftop. We started this church 17 years ago to baptize people in the kingdom. So if you're feeling God's call in your life, if you feel like you need to be forgiven of your sins and you want to start anew, you can do that here.